You know, ever since I came back, I wanted to, in a way, make up for the lost time. And I don't think there's any other way except fighting the best champions out there. We fought another undefeated fighter, undefeated champion tonight. There's no one else that excites me enough, that motivates me, and that can challenge me other than Errol Spence. And I'm willing to take that challenge all the way up just because that's the fight that I want. That's the fight that will motivate me the most. Hey, Mikey, back here. Mikey, straight back. Hey, congratulations on the win tonight. Uh, when you talk about Errol Spence, he came over and he spoke to some of us at ringside after the fight, and uh, we asked him what he thought about it. And when he was concluding his remarks, he said he was licking his chops. Uh, you know, he gave you respect for being a... a this is from the um, uh, Mikey Garcia versus uh, Robert Easter um, post-fight press conference. We have a lot of news today. Um, Wednesday, October the 3rd, 2018, 8.13 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm a little behind on videos, so... I got a plumber coming and he's got to work in over in the uh, boiler room. So going to be one of uh, many, but let's talk about Mikey Garcia. Yesterday, the WBC ordered him to fight as they should have his uh, mandatory Luke Campbell after his IBF mandatories. Basically right now he has two mandatories. He's going to be fighting a uh, Richard Comey, not Earl Spence. We're going to talk about that. Richard Comey, either likely on PBC on regular Fox. And I believe that's going to be in December or in January. It's a new and improved PBC on Fox. I've explained it in a video where basically, have you ever seen you the UFC on Fox's coverage where they have the post fight show and, you know, they talk to the fighters and shit, you know, after the fights, you know, um, in the lock. It's going to be nice. It's going to be something to look forward to. So. He's already signed it, according to um, Dan Rayfield. Remember, I knew something was up because there was various extensions to the IBF, um, the sanctioning body, the belt that, you know, uh, Mikey Garcia and Richard Comey um, are fighting for, where they had to come to a deal up to this point on October the 12th. But last night, according to Dan Rayfield yesterday, they got a deal done. We're just waiting for the uh, venue. I believe that the reason why we're not seeing Mikey Garcia versus Errol Spence is because somebody sabotaged it. But the fact that somebody sabotaged that means that um, Showtime has another pay-per-view open in January or whenever they want to do it. And it could very well be uh, Mayweather versus Pacquiao. Mayweather is talking. Pacquiao is talking to everybody. And uh, Showtime president Steven Espinosa yesterday confirmed confirmed via interview is that it's very, very possible. And obviously he would be the one that's in the, in, in the say, right? So when it comes to Mikey Garcia, it's making you wonder, well, if you're going to be staying at 135, Lomachenko was fighting Pedraza, this guy right here, you know him, fighting up um, uh, BA and WBO on uh, December the 8th in uh, Madison Square Garden. He's 11 and 1 with uh, nine kills. You know, you know his name. I don't even know why BoxRec hasn't updated it yet. It's official. But nonetheless, well, he's the, don't, don't mind that. I would, that. That really doesn't mean anything in this case. But when you look at his other mandatory, Luke Campbell, he just beat um, Yvonne Mendy in a very, very good performance. Unfortunately, his stable mate, George Groves, lost. Nonetheless, uh, Mikey Garcia's got some nice challenges ahead. But to avoid... Um, Richard Comey or to avoid um, fighting a Lou Campbell as a mandatory, you know, he could fight a Lomachenko. Now, the narrative is, and that's what it is, it's a narrative that Bob Aaron won't give Mikey Garcia a fair shake because of uh, the past. Also, Mikey, Gar Mikey Garcia seems to be heavily promoted by Richard Schaefer because Richard Schaefer once the Errol Spence fight, but I'm thinking that listen to this, and this is this is this is not the first time he says something like this. This was obviously when the news had shocked everybody. It was like, what he's once Errol Spence, but listen to this. A, a, a top-notch fighter, but it seemed like he didn't think that that your size would translate to where he's at. Um, what do you think about the fact that you're both tremendous fighters, but that he's so much bigger than you? 
No, that's that, that's a challenge. You know, I am moving up all the way to welterweight. You know, if I land that fight, it'll be my first attempt at, at welterweight, and I'm going against the top guy there, against the, the best in the division. I'm prepared to take on that challenge. Like I said, I'm here to challenge myself, you know, and he is the best. He might feel that it's, you know, an easy fight for him when I'm too small. You know, well, that's that's fine. You know, let's let's get in the ring and let's get to work. I'd like to ask Robert Garcia about that also. Robert, I, I know that you've had Listen uh, to Robert. past statements, had some misgivings about the prospect of Mikey going up to welterweight. Can you expound on that now that it seems though it's going to probably become a reality at the end of this year? Look, we've always uh, said that uh, we shouldn't move too fast and, and, and take that challenge right now because, you know, we're doing great at, uh, at lightweight and even uh, junior welterweight, but uh, that's what Mikey wants. And uh, we know that uh, he does have the skills. He, ha he has the time to compete. You know, it's not going to be easy. And uh, Mikey said before, you know, he, he, li you know, he, he loves those challenges. And uh, th this will probably be the, the first fight that he's ever had where he's going to be the underdog. And I think that's what's going to motivate him even more. That's so why he, on, he's willing to take So I'm, 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 you know, from now on, we're, we're, we're going to take the fight. Just give it up for Robert D. Uh, later on, um, in uh, recent interviews, Mike uh, Robert Garcia would say he would do everything in his power to make sure that fight doesn't happen. So it has to make you think that between Robert Garcia, you know, the brother, and the father of um, Mikey Garcia, they're probably looking like, yo, Errol Spence is going to come into the ring at about 158, maybe 160 pounds, you know, depending. That's a 13-pound uh, uh, weight advantage. You know, Mikey Garcia is probably going to weigh in at maybe 145, 147, coming to the ring at about 140, 150, something like that. You know, even though Mikey wouldn't have lost anything in regards to respect in losing to Errol Spence, if he would have, and don't get it twisted. Great fighters have moved up double weight divisions many, many times. For example, remember, Kell Brook moved up two weight divisions. No catch weight to fight Golovkin. But the issue is, Mikey Garcia was a former 126-pound champion. That's a big-ass jump. It's not saying it can't happen. Remember, Manny Pacquiao won. See, it's hard. I understand that, you know, you have to respect the gangster when it comes to, you know, him winning um, against Antonio Margarito. And I'm not taking anything away from that, but it's like, okay, all right, that was a, a, um, the type of situation where Similar to when Miguel Cotto beat Sergio Martinez, except Sergio Martinez was injured. But nonetheless, we knew that Miguel Cotto wasn't a 160 pounder, right? Remember when uh, Roy Jones had uh, went up and fought uh, um, um, John Ruiz at heavyweight. We knew he shouldn't stay there. I remember, quote unquote, Lennox Lewis saying, if he really wants to take the test, step up and knock the S off your chest. Remember some shit like that? So it's not unheard of. And then you can go back deep in boxing history. You know, remember um, uh, Ray Leonard and Duran and Hearns and, um, well, Hagler only won one fight. But they motherfuckers was fighting in all these different divisions and rematches and shit. But in this case, you know, boxing is much more of a business. And Mikey Garcia, according to many sources, is the number one PBC guy. You know, Mayweather's not PBC. He's Mayweather. So, if he's going to stay at 135, he's got to fight Loma. Because let's say, for example, he fights Richard Comey, right? And then he goes on um, to fight his mandatory Luke Campbell. They're going to be looking at him like, yo, like, what's going on with Loma? Chin Listen, I'm tired of it. They got to come to a deal. But I already know what the narrative is going to be. It's going to be Bob Aaron fault if the fight don't happen, right? People thought the Rigondeaux fight with uh, Loma wasn't going to happen because of Bob. ESPN has the money. But Showtime and that PBC side, they're not going to let him go back over there. And Bob Arum and his side, they're not. ESPN is not letting Loma go. They got to come to an agreement. Because if he's going to stay at 135, you know, because eventually with the way things looking for Lomachenko, he... He doesn't, have, he doesn't have too many big fights available for him. And I'm talking about in that 135-pound weight division. So he's going to run into issues. He may have to go up to 140. 
But anyway, um, T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. We're waiting for the date on uh, Mikey Garcia versus Richard Comey. And also, we got to now talk about what Errol Spence is going to do because it looks like he's going to be fighting on the Fury, on the Wilder Fury undercard. He posted something along the lines on his Snapchat. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.